Hey guys, Alex from HB.media here, and today I am going to pack up my bicycle. So we're here to my left, your right, and I'm going to put that inside of this post carry coat bag. Right here. This is the large size. I believe that is 135 liters. I am not certain, but whichever one it is, it's the big one. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to show you guys how to pack up a gravel bike with 650B tires into here. Enjoy. Be full. You'll notice that I've got my bike packing and stuff already inside the case. And uh, that's how I like to fly with it. Keep everything together. I usually take uh, one or two bike bags into my carry-on, just to lighten the load. From there, because I usually do go overweight when I'm flying with this guy. But the good news is, is that so far I've had a pretty solid track record with uh, airlines. And that actually uh, allowing me to take my bike even when it's overweight, which is pretty sick. And let's see, so the weight limit normally for each airline is about the same. They say uh, 23 kilograms or I think that comes down to 55 pounds. And the last few times that I've brought my bike on, it's been around like 56, 57 pounds. Um, I don't think I've seen it quite in 60 yet, but each time they've always waved it and just like let me go with it. So that's been pretty sick. And um, yeah, so right now, like, I'm not even sure if there's like a right or wrong way to pack this up. Like, I mean, I do it for the most part, like completely right, um, I think. <laughs> but uh, like right now, like I'm gonna put it on the lowest gear because that's usually the easiest one to put back on. So I'm not sure if there's some sort of uh, weird voodoo magic that you wanna like store your derailleur in normally, but this is how I do it. I think it's the right way and it's worked with me about like six or eight times. Not quite sure how many times I've flown with it now. But uh, yeah. I'll keep on going. Yeah. When I first started flying on my bike, I uh, did it the cheap way, which also worked out just fine. And that was using a uh, bike box that you can get from any bike shop. You just pack your bike up like you get it from the store, essentially. And uh, yeah, fly with it in a cover box. A lot of airlines will let you take it that way. I haven't had any say no to me. I've also only flown about four times doing it with the carver box until I got this guy to replace that. Reason is, is because the carver boxes started tearing and like when flight people or people that work at airports uh, who are handling your baggage, they'll actually tear the back uh, or tear the, the box when it's got too much weight in it. So I've had that happen a couple times. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go for something good and stick with this. This guy has been on the bike back and trip recently too. And look, I just did something wrong there. If you can have your derailleur have like this, uh, my right little derailleur has got this lock in it so that you can actually like keep it taut or not taut, I mean. And I'm just gonna do it right now to make this a little bit easier. Man, it's two wheels off. We'll break the chain now no proper order to do all this, you know, you do what you do, and you just do it. Kind of like what uh, Nike said, right? Alright, this chain is filthy. But I guess I'll clean it wherever I end up next. Chain breaker tool, always very useful. Um, yeah. You don't want this uh, disc brake remover tool. This, for me, this is the one I need to use specifically for my Shimano discs, I think it is. <laughs> and this is the right one for my wheels. But you're gonna want these to remove your discs because your discs um, will have the potential of bending or getting warped in transit. I haven't ever kept my discs on in this bag, but in the carver box, it did actually bend when I had it attached to the wheel and um, actually my buddy, I'm thinking about it on the bike packing trip that we went on, 
his disc also bent inside of a carrying case and that was because they were attached to the wheel. You want to detach them so there's like no like, you know, big pressure being put on them. You just want to have them separate and keep them together. And uh, yeah, chain tools also very important because you want to be able to break that and put it back together. Uh, a thing that I've actually been able to do DIY before was uh, when I didn't own a chain tool yet is I uh, actually used a brake cable and I just like put the brake cable through one of these. Uh, I put the brake cable, hopefully this is focusing. I put the brake cable through one of these guys and then through the other end that would be here, I guess, so one in here and one in here. And then you can kind of like pull the cable and it will actually just like relock it in. And uh, yeah, make sure to keep track of these little connectors, uh, your master links, because you don't want to lose that for where you're going. Because I just dropped one here on the floor. I'm gonna keep those together. Yep. That's all in. And uh, zip lock bags, handy. No need to throw them out either. Keep for the next arrival. Aha! Another useful tool. You want to remove your pedals, right? So this is what we're going to use to remove them, right over there. If you are flying super light and for some reason you can't take this tool with you, you can always use a multi-tool and uh, work with the back of the pedal, like right over on this side, or over here. There you go. And that should uh, do it. Now to remove your pedal, you want to turn. So this is your drive chain side. This is the only side that actually spins correctly, like in the sense of like loosening and tightening things. So you want to spin this guy to your left to loosen it. There you go. So left is loose and right is tight on the drive train side. And I only started to remember that after doing this about like 20 times I think. And even though it was a very easy thing to remember, that is how I remember it now. So now that we're looking at the wrong side, or the not dry train side, this is going to be the opposite. So not righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's going to be lefty tighty, righty loosey. So let's go right this time. There we go. And uh, yeah, I never over tighten my pedals when I put them in because when I take it apart, you know, you just don't want it to be that hard and when you're like putting pressure on weird things, it's probably a better way to do it, but you don't want to like accidentally like fly out of your tool and smack stuff around, you know? So pedals and to another zip bag. Oh there it is. Got a nice little spider work too. Leave you over there. Alright, let's uh move the derailleur. We got it up here, it's in our face, why not? Um, yeah, so again, not sure if there's like a, a rule for how it's supposed to be. Man, look at all that dirt. Um, but I do, hello, I just taught my finger. I do personally keep it more closed. I imagine if there's a right way, that's the way. So now, do you remove this? Um, another piece of kit that's useful to have on a bikepacking trip and I have not needed it yet and I actually haven't even traveled with it yet but I've seen what happens to other people and uh, I've just ordered this piece is uh, the derailleur hanger. For that is a more sensitive piece and if you were to break it then you would have no derailleur on your ride. Having no derailleur is, hmm, I would say no fun, but some people might disagree with that. So uh, the derailleur hanger is just this metal piece here that just holds your derailleur to your frame. So make sure you have a backup one of those. It doesn't weigh much, doesn't cost much either. And it's a good piece of kit to have with you when you are bike packing. And we're talking about extra pieces to bring with you. Tubes are useful, chain as well. Wally straps tends to solve a lot of problems. Alright. 
So my derailleur, I like to bag it up too because it's greasy and oily. And it's gonna go on the bag later, but just keep it from touching other stuff too much. Um, cool, let's uh, get the wheels in, shall we? There's a tool. And again, a lot of people swear by torque wrenches and whatnot, but kind of just do it by feel. If it feels right, should be right. Haven't had any problems yet. With loosening this guy, um, probably also illegal to rest it on the ground on that. So since that's probably against cycling law, we'll do this. That's tool here. There we go. Loosen the ring there. This comes with two pieces. Keep those together. Remove the disc. Just put that there. This is sloppy. And the piece that I just took off, I'm gonna put that right back where it was. So we wanna keep that together. <laughs> And uh, I have two zipper zip blocks for the discs, and I do actually have a little label inside there. So this is back, the other one says front. Um, I just like to keep them on the same wheel. I don't know if there's actually any benefit or harm to switching it up, but that is what I do, and it hasn't hurt me yet. So these are also mechanical brakes. So whenever I do arrive at a destination, I tend to uh, slightly adjust my mechanical brakes. The pads and discs are always like aligned, but I think like because of the bumping around and getting moved so much, uh, like it just like loosens up a tiny, tiny bit. So I just take my Allen key, put it in the disc brake adjuster thingy, and tighten her up a tiny bit. And that's on my TRP disc brakes that I have. These are not hydro. Hydro is a whole different ball game. With hydro, you need to like put spacers in between your discs, in between your brakes, because they'll like over tighten, and then you have to like pry them loose at your destination, which also happened to a friend of mine recently. So uh, I was able to get on my bike and ride right away essentially, while he still had to go to a bike shop to get his disc brakes opened up. So if you're doing like bike packing and stuff, um, mechanical, unless you like know how to like work with your hydro and actually fix it yourself, uh, mechanical to me has been easier. It's been more like straightforward, just, you know, down key works. Um, pressure on the tires. Airlines will tell you to decrease your pressure all the way before you fly. I don't like doing that because I don't want my sealant to get all over the bag. So I will decrease the pressure significantly to make it nice and squishy. But I still want to keep air in there because I don't want to break the seal. So this is already feeling pretty solid right there. And what will happen now when you fly with this is it'll like increase in PSI up in the sky, kind of like a bag of potato chips, right? Like it starts normal, and then when you're up in the air, suddenly it's like about to pop. So with this, I imagine right now I'm at like 10 PSI. That's what I'm guessing. And I imagine that up in the air it's probably going to be like 12 feet inside, so it's not going to make any substantial difference at all. And if a bag of potato chips doesn't pop, I doubt that these will pop. If that's your concern. Clearly, somebody's concerned about it. They are not this for some reason. Um, oh yeah, so you have two cartridges. I'm not supposed to fly with those, so don't accidentally have that. And don't bring your camping stove either. Yeah, no, I left mine <laughs> where I went camping. Uh, yeah, stoves are, yeah, you definitely don't want to bring your propane tank, and you don't want to bring CO2 cartridges, so they're just like not allowed by airlines. And also CO2 cartridges. Why do you have them in the first place? Use a pump. It's temporary air, bro. Get that long one. Put it all over you. Um, all right. Let's see if uh, you can see this. Lube is always useful to bring. Tape for marking stuff. Um, chain lube, forgot to bring that. Gonna bring that next time. Been having to use other people's lube. So we start with 
derailleur up, cassette up, and you go ahead and you throw it in there. And there are these little guards inside of here, like a hard piece. You kind of just want to push it down and make sure that your wheel is going around it and not getting stuck on it. Oh. <laughs> just pushed my fingernail right into the cassette and one of the teeth went under it. it felt very nice. Mm. Mmm, very nice. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna wash that real quick. Woo, that was exciting. Um, yeah. Make sure to reach in there. <laughs> reach in there and keep the hard plastic above and below the axles of your wheel so that you can just slide in. Sometimes it'll just like kind of like hook onto it a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that slid right in there. I don't know if you noticed, but that was pretty straightforward. Um, what I have found in my experience versus my friend's experience is that 650B fits better than 700C. And if you can guess why that is, it's probably because the diameter is slightly smaller on a 650B than a 700C bicycle. And given that, if you have gravel tires on your 650B bike or gravel tires on your 700C, you're you're gonna have chunky tires, regardless, but they're just gonna be a little bit more outwards on the 700C, so it's gonna be a little bit more of a tight fit on those bikes. So 650 has been a very easy pack for me. And this pouch is good for your disc brakes. And there's two of them, so you can actually just have one on the front and one on the back. If you know, if you don't have a label, I just keep them both together. Double the strength. There you go, was in. Zip that wheel away. That one is done. All right, front wheel. And I don't think it gives a about which way it's going. Or gives a hoot, sorry. I don't think it gives a hoot about which way it's going. So you kind of just fit it in there. Sure, it's not lopping on anything. It is right now. There you go. It's a whole other wheel inside your post carry case. This is the part where it becomes handy to have a bike stand. But right now, I'm about to do all this stuff without a bike stand and kind of just like wobble everything around and everything gets a little bit hectic, but you know, it works. I've done this a bunch of times. One time my buddy that I showed up at did have a bike stand. Helped a lot. But we do not need that. For we are strong like bull. Ha ha! Found it. It's your number one friend is your multi-tool. If you do not have one, you might as well not be ready, but... Oh yeah, and uh... If you care about your fit at all, you're gonna wanna tape off your stuff. Is that focusing? Can me confirm? There we go, it's focusing. Yeah, tape off your measurements. So there we go, there we go. And uh, honestly, I never even unscrewed this. I only did this part, so this one doesn't even matter. But I was just marking stuff just in case I had to remove it. Keep that over there. Now take off any extraneous electronics from your bicycle. Oh, whoa, here's a popo. Here we go. Bike bags, we do not need. Fine. And your quad lock. Also, not gonna need that in trained. And uh, if you're building your bicycle, I uh, recommend that you give yourself a decent amount of slack on these front cables. Because if you 
build your bicycle like me, and you don't give yourself a lot of slack, you're also going to be pulling on your bar tape when you put your handlebars in later. Because like your angles like get a little bit weird all over the place, and uh, you just don't want to pull too much of those cables to like, because it'll like kind of undo your bar tape and just like pull it back. It doesn't undo it. It's just like yeah, pulls back on it. Four time. Maybe we'll already start by sleeping this up a little bit. Even though those teeth just stabbed me earlier, we'll keep them safe. part as janky as possible. Oh yeah, nice little frame scrape always helps. And uh, right, I didn't even mention anything about the bike, but this is my uh, Curve Kevin of Steel, or uh, GXR, depending on how long ago you got this bike. And uh, this one has both names, so that is how it is. All right, loosen this up already. That's off. Okay, um, so I think what I'll do now, my strategy, is I put tape over this. So the coil, nice. I tape it so that my headset doesn't fall out or apart or whatever. So just like that. And that. My friend who flew with me recently, he did not, and it was fine. I do, and it's fine. Okay. Now for the age-old question. Does it go in? Drive train up? It sure does. Keep this together, put that back in the headset, or the top of the tube, or the whatever, all this thing. I think we'll call it a fork today. And yeah, remember, none of this is rocket science. Just uh, do what you do. Love your bikes. Ride them well. Don't hurt it too much, but they can take a little hit. All right, so now for your fork. You want to get that in here. You don't have to, but I think that's what it's for. I think so. And uh, when it's in there, it's in there. Now, if I were to be a very caring citizen of my high school, I'd probably remove my brake calipers because it's going to be a tight fit to get it through this without doing that. But if I was Alex from HV Media, and I would probably just go ahead and manhandle it all the way through. You kind of get that slip over it, put my hand through here, and then you kind of hold it and pull through without having to remove it. And it's that looks a lot easier than it is normally. I guess I've done it a couple times now. And use it. Then your bars. Look at that. Fantastic. And there's a little pouch back here. Where you throw your derailleur in. Look at that. 
I actually usually don't even put it in there. But since you guys are watching, I want to be a good example, you know? Oh, oh chocolate! I've been flying with this this whole time. Wait. Oh my god. Mystery chocolate. Look at that. Is there more? What else do I have in here? An instruction manual? Oh my god, you're kidding me. More mystery chocolate. Oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, this is what happens when you travel with your bicycle. You put in places and you forget to look there and you realize that you have chocolate from Belgium. So, wow, nice. I wonder how melted and unmelted and melted and melted and unmelted it's been. And how it tastes. How good it tastes is what I meant to say there. I hate words. Not my specialty, but we make it work. All right, so we've made some pretty good progress already. Seat. Um, I think technically you put it inside there. Slide up. Good enough. Um, and remember, I'm just your everyday cyclist, I guess. The doesn't really follow instructions, but falls them good enough to make it work. Alright, next thing. Bicycle bags. Cover their space. That's where they fit. Keep things nice and snug. Look at that, so snug. Nice and open. Throw a bag in a bag, why not? That's the point, you're bike packing. Put that over there. Oh my god, look at me, I'm a bozo. I forgot to put the bike shield on. Well, it's never too late. That's why it felt so wrong to have you colliding. It's because I didn't have the cover. There you go. It's never too late to put on some protection. Always use protection. Destination instructions. Here we forgot. <sighs> Miscellaneous pieces of the bicycle. We want those as well at our destination. Your multi tool. Bring that. Right. Throwing all this in here. And this has some other jam in there, but it's looking kind of full already. You need to put the chocolate on the back. Chocolate on the back. And 
and go ahead and close up your bicycle bag. in the large post carry co bicycle bag. Hope you guys were able to learn something from this. And I hope you guys didn't suffer too much through this lengthy video. But uh, yeah, that's how you do it. And let's take a look at how long it actually took to do that. It took me 40 minutes, and that's with readjusting the camera and all that, and not rushing it at all. So wherever you're going with your bicycle, I'd say accommodate an hour, or 30 minutes if you're going really fast and uh, you should be able to pack this up and get it going. So thank you guys for watching, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.